Hi, I'm Associate Professor Joe Fielding, and I'd like to briefly showcase a paper that my group recently published in the journal Neurology um, that describes some of our research findings in people with visual snow syndrome. So for those of you who've never heard of this syndrome, uh, well, it's a constellation of visual symptoms with a central or defining symptom being visual snow. So what visual snow is, it's a sort of unusual perceptual experience, which is sort of like a veil of flickering dots or static that appears right the way across the visual field. And it's there 24 seven. So whether the eyes are open or closed and it's superimposed on top of a number of other visual symptoms that define the syndrome. And these can include things like trailing after images, um, excessive floaters, sort of swirling clouds that appear right the way across the vision, and bright flashing lights. And the big problem um, for somebody who suffers from the disorder is that it can be um, extremely debilitating as you can imagine, but there aren't any treatments for it. And that's primarily because we don't know what causes it in the first place. And that's certainly not helped by the fact that until now we haven't been able to measure it. It's completely subjective. In fact, the clinical examination is usually normal. So our research rather has been attempting to um, create those first crucial steps in finding out what is actually driving visual snow in the first place, which is obviously important if you're trying to cure the disorder. So the study I'm presenting um, used a series of eye movement tasks. So specifically looking at the way that people with visual snow process visual information. And so we tracked eye movements in over 60 patients and essentially we got them to look either towards or away from a suddenly appearing visual stimulus. And then we varied the cognitive complexity of the task by interleaving different task demands and sort of tapping into more decision-making or executive processes. And what we found was a relatively unique and a consistent pattern of abnormalities in these people. But irrespective of um, the complexity of the task, and this included really short latency um, eye movements towards a suddenly appearing visual stimulus and great difficulty not looking away from an irrelevant visual stimulus. So they were making more, um, I guess you can call them inhibitory control errors. But what we, what we didn't find were any of those sort of higher order executive deficits that the task we use let us um, tap into. Um, so these deficits are effectively consistent with um, lower level attentional or filtering problems. But in short, what we did identify was an eye movement signature of visual snow. And that's really important for a couple of reasons. I mean, firstly, most obviously, it gives us a few clues about what's actually going on and what's driving visual snow. But secondly, it provides us with a way to directly measure brain function that's completely independent from the subjective reports of someone who actually experiences um, visual snow, which you obviously can't measure. This is something we couldn't do previously, and we've been using this signature to really um, focus our research moving forward. In terms of what next, well, that, like all research, very, um, very much depends on funding. But what we're proposing to do is a sort of coordinated program of interrelated studies using um, techniques like um, functional imaging and EEG that let us look directly at brain activity while a patient is actually performing these sort of aberrant eye movements. So we're interrogating the um, objective signature rather than the subjective perceptual symptoms. And collectively, that'll then let us create a causal model of what's actually going on in the brain of someone who has visual snow. And that's one giant step closer to finding a cure. So just quickly, I'd like to acknowledge the incredible generosity of the Visual Snow Initiative, which is a non-profit organisation that's provided funding for much of the work we've done so far in this space.